Good morning, everybody. Uh, I, I was staring at this passage for a while, um, and as, as normally happens, not really knowing what to preach. Um, and then I just felt God put something on my heart um, just to do speak a little shorter than um, than normal, and then just for us as a as a body, just to kind of uh, respond perhaps a little bit differently. Um, and as it happens, actually, um, a lot of what's been brought, especially what Catherine shared right at the start of the meeting, um, is, is 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 she's kind of done my preach already. Um, so <laughs> so thanks, Catherine. <laughs> um, it's always good to know. Um, maybe I am hearing from God and not just making stuff up. So um, <laughs> um, so we are in Acts 13, um, verses 1 to 12, if you want to grab a Bible and, and turn, turn there. And like I said, I'm going to try and be quick this morning, um, as in not rush through it, but I don't have very much to say. Um, so here we go, Acts 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, a member of the court of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had John to assist them. When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they came upon a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet named Bar-Jesus. He was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, a man of intelligence, who summoned Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Elimas, a magician, for that's the meaning of his name, opposed them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, full of all deceit and villainy, will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind and unable to see the sun for a time. Immediately, mist and darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking people to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had occurred, for he was astonished at the teaching of the Lord. So the, the kind of verse I really want to focus on is verse, verse two. Um, so you know, the Holy Spirit said, do this. And Saul and Barnabas, as we see, are sent, sent out by the Holy Spirit. The presence of God is there guide he's the one they listen to and follow they hear him speak and they respond in faith um and as i said i I felt like i was staring at this passage for a long time not knowing what to say and i was reading john mark comer um has written three short little ebooks like 15 20 minute reads um that you can get for free and i was reading the first uh the first of these three books that he'd written during the pandemic and he was talking about exodus 13 um, about how God he doesn't give Israel a map and a schedule when he leads them out from Egypt he actually gives them his presence as a guide right so he had they camp around a a pillar of of, uh, clouds by day and a pillar of fire by night and only when that pillar moves do the Israelites follow the leading of God Um, so Katie and I had the privilege of of going to Sri Lanka uh, for Christmas in the year, a couple of, uh, well, six years ago now, maybe I think it was. Um, and so we had we had a few weeks there. We had a, the first week kind of traveling around the country. Um, and, and, you know, what we could have done is we could have got our phones or the little, you know, uh, Lonely Planet Sri Lanka books that we bought and, and made a, a schedule and a map of all the places you wanted to go and how long it would take to get to each one and, and, uh, and went, ha- fit in as much as we could. Um, during the time that we were there and but what we ended up doing was having a was having a guide um, a driver you know we had hotels that we were staying at but essentially we had this guide who would who would tell us a time that he was going to turn up and we'd um, get up at that point jump in the car and then we'd not really had much of an idea where we were going or what we were doing next you know he would be driving around and he he might say oh there's 
you know, there's a beautiful waterfall over here. Let's just stop over there. Or, um, you know, did you know Sri Lanka's famous for its sapphires? There's a there's a jewelry place over here where they can teach you about the mining and you can see some of the sapphires or there's a, you know, a botanical gardens or whatever it was. You know, we didn't really know each day what we were doing. We turned up when the, the guide said turned up. We got in the car and we trusted his expertise. We trusted that he knew the island better than we could ever know the islands, that he knew the places, he'd been there, he had the experience, he had the knowledge. Um, you know, when we trusted this guide, it meant we could relax, we could follow his leading, we could learn from him, from his knowledge and experience. Um, and, and just enjoy being there instead of worrying about having to get to the next place all the time. Um, you know, John Mark Comer in this little book, he says, God is a guide, not a map. He doesn't hand out step-by-step -step directions and a schedule and leave us to go off on our own. He is with his people out in front, a step ahead. So in Exodus 13, that John Mark Comer is talking about, God's with the Israelites as he leads them through the desert. In this bit here in Acts 13, God is with Saul and Barnabas as he leads them to Cyprus and, and beyond. You know, and God is with us too by his Holy Spirit. He wants to guide us. He wants us to trust him, to enjoy his company, to learn from him and to follow him, to turn up when he tells us to turn up and let him lead us where he will. And if you can trust him, if we can let him guide us, he gives us what we need. So the Israelites back in Exodus 13, um, you know, they, they were complaining. The thing they needed was food. And what does God do? He provides manna. He provides a daily bread for them, enough for the day. And that was it. For Saul and Barnabas, they encounter opposition from Elimas or, or Bar Jesus, the, the magician. And God gives them what, what they need. He fills Paul with the Holy Spirit in that moment. And Paul speaks and, and God moves. Um, and he will give us what we need for each day, our daily bread, as we trust him to guide us. You know, so we um, obviously this last year have been living through um, living through COVID. You know, we it's something we've not encountered before. It's um, something that's new to every single one of us. Um, and, you know, the, the reality is that we don't know the way ahead we haven't known the way ahead for quite a long time we can make plans and schedules but as we've seen even over this last week or so they often don't go as as planned um and as well as a, you know as a church we've been talking a lot about about this prophetic word of being or walking into a new era of being a way we've not not been before um seeing something we've not seen before and the title of uh john mark Kerner's book which i really like is is um living in holy uncertainty um, and I think that that is the journey for us is learning to live in holy uncertainty that's what Barnabas and Saul were doing they didn't know the map the schedule they didn't know where they would end up but God spoke and they followed and they trusted him to provide what they would need for whatever happened next um, we're learning to do the same as a church family I think in this moment is to is to wait on God to listen for the leading of the spirit and to follow, even if we don't know the end point of what things might look like. And, and I think for us as individuals as well, we need to learn to continue to do the same, to go to God each day for what we need and to let him guide us, to be people of his presence, trusting him to guide us, trusting him to make us a people who are ready for whatever we encounter during the day, whatever we encounter next, one day at a time. Um, how? Well, it's not particularly <laughs> complicated. It's nothing rocket science. Um, what is it that Barnabas and Saul are doing here and, and the church in Antioch before God speaks? While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, then after fasting and praying, they laid hands on them. You know, it, they fasted, they prayed, they worshipped. That's that's it, you know, it, it's really, it is as simple as that, is, you know, it's coming to God in prayer, it's talking to him, it's asking us, asking him to give us, you know, our, our daily bread, it's, it's um, 
hearing from him through the scriptures. It's, it's letting the, the voice of the spirit speak into our lives each day, trusting him to give us what we need for that day. As Colin encouraged us last week, turning to him in prayer first instead of as a last resort. And that actually is all I've got written down. <laughs> and what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do now um, was actually just in, let God speak to us. And well, perhaps more importantly, to, to try and help us listen um, or to have some moments of listening. Um, and so we've already seen this morning, I can see people on my screen um, who have prophetic gifts. And I think probably we're already hearing some of some of what God wants to speak to us about this morning. But I just, firstly, I just want to invite people, if, they, if any of you are feeling like God is speaking about something that you're just hearing God saying, right, we need to respond in this way, we need to do that. I just want to invite you guys just to jump in and, and speak at any point. Um, but otherwise, what I'd love us to do is to, um, to go into breakout rooms and to prophesy over one another and just like, let's let's put it into practice let's as we gather together as a as a as a body as a people as a family let's go in let's go into breakout rooms let's prophesy over one another um if you don't feel like you've hit, you've heard anything from god we can just bless one another we can encourage one another in prayer we can you know i know not everybody loves breakout rooms but we can sit there in silence and we can receive and pray in silence that's okay as well but I'd really love us just to be bold for a few minutes, to take some risks, to be willing to, to get things wrong, um, but mostly just to listen to the voice of the Spirit and to prophesy over one another, if that's okay.